to you. I want to go live now to Parliament Hill. Uh, the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, John Duncan, is giving an update on today's meeting with First Nations. Let's listen in. Training services. At last year's historic Crown First Nations gathering, Prime Minister Harper committed to building on that progress and today's meeting marks another important step in that direction. The Prime Minister participated in the full meeting and had a good frank dialogue with all participants. While we're pleased with the constructive discussions that took place today, there's still more work to be done to improve living conditions and economic opportunities for First Nation communities. The agreed upon agenda items for the meeting focused on treaty implementation and economic development. To that end, the Prime Minister agreed to a high-level dialogue on the treaty relationship and comprehensive claims. The Prime Minister agreed with the need to provide enhanced oversight from the Prime Minister's office and the Privy Council office. And the Prime Minister agreed to debrief the members of his cabinet and government on today's discussions and agreed to meet with the National Chief in the coming weeks to review next steps. Working together remains the best way to achieve our shared objective of healthier, more prosperous and self-sufficient First Nation communities. Our government remains committed to working with those Aboriginal leaders who want to work with the Government of Canada to create jobs and growth in their communities. Now, at this time, I will uh, turn the mic over to uh, Parliamentary Secretary Rickford for um, a message in French. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Ministre. Thank you, Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Since 2006, our government has adopted concrete steps with respect to such priori priorities as education, economic development, and accommodation for First Nations. We have built new schools. We have invested in uh, clean water built uh, hundreds of new houses and provided additional funding for the most vulnerable First Nations communities, as well as investing. That's Parliamentary Secretary Greg Rickford. He's just repeating uh, what Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Duncan just said about the meeting with First Nation leaders and the Prime Minister that took place this afternoon. Just give you a little summary of what we found out about this meeting and the results so far. They didn't get an agreement on uh, the National Assembly as the eight things that they went in there with, demands. They didn't get full agreement on those eight demands. However, they did agree to work on the treaty relationship. There will be another meeting with the Prime Minister and National Assembly uh, Chief Sean Atlio in the next coming weeks. Uh, they haven't set a date for that to talk about an update. We also just heard from Matthew Kuhncum and some of his uh, feelings from this meeting that just happened. What he was saying is that when it came to the omnibus legislation, it was one of the demands that they went in there with that they rescind this omnibus legislation. What he felt from the Prime Minister is that now the Prime Minister feels that or agrees with the fact with the First Nations leaders that he does have a duty to consult. So now he will consult on this legislation. Didn't say that he would rescind that legis legislation, but would continue to have dialogue with First Nations leaders. Again, there will be another meeting in the next couple of weeks uh, with the Prime Minister and the National Assembly uh, Chief Sean Atlio. They will have an update at that point in time. But of the eight uh, demands from the Assembly's National Assemblies uh, first of First Nations. They only didn't get full agreement on all of them, but did come to a consensus on some of them. Now they're going to take um, some questions, and I we'll we take you back to the uh, Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and listen in. To continue making progress uh, in terms of uh, working with uh, Aboriginal leadership, where we can uh, create benefits for uh, jobs, growth, economic opportunities. Um, so I, I can't really respond to the rest of your question because uh, that's something that the meeting was not designed to uh, achieve. Did you offer to change C-38 or C-45? Did you offer to amend it to address their concerns? Um, there was discussions uh, around um, legislation. Our legislation 
indeed uh, respects Section 35. That's a constitutional obligation that we have. And um, so we're proceeding in that way with all of our legislation. What does that mean? Are you doing anything differently about C-38 or C-45? No, I think you can go back to the, um, the points that I described uh, in terms of what the uh, Prime Minister is committing to. Uh, and that includes um, ensuring that there is um, uh, regular um, knowledge of any concerns that may come from the uh, First Nation leadership. And uh, so we feel that we're, we're quite... Uh, uh, we're quite comfortable that we have met our constitutional obligations with those bills, and we believe there's uh, every reason to proceed. Mr. Duncan, January 16th, Ontario chiefs have said they're going to block the roads, block the trains, and that investment won't be safe. So that's not far away. What are you going to do about that? Well, we, uh, we've said uh, before that... Uh, you know, Canadians have every right to uh, protest if they wish to do so, as long as they do so in a uh, lawful way. Um, this is um, this is a matter that will be up to uh, the authorities at that time. We sure. took the same position uh, in uh, Sarnia, as you know. Was there any suggestion that these future talks will involve any discussion of uh, resource revenue sharing? And what was the response from the Prime Minister on that? Well, the, um, the commitments on uh, item one and two are dealing with uh, treaties and dealing with comprehensive claims. Uh, when we talk about um, economic development, economic growth, jobs and economic opportunity, uh, all of those uh, um, things such as uh, resource uh, revenues are part and parcel of that discussion. And we don't, uh, the federal government does not receive resource uh, revenues. And so that's a question uh, that really will involve um, the provinces. Uh, and that's, that was recognized by the, uh, by the room. Are you prepared to do anything to, so that Teresa Spence will stop her hunger strike? Um, I've been... Uh, you know, very uh, concerned about this. I had a personal uh, friend who went on a hunger strike years ago and uh, di did great detriment to his health. Um, I remember Elizabeth May uh, when she had her um, uh, hunger strike <clears throat> in Ottawa here, uh, and I talked to her on day 14 of that, and, and I, I like to think that I may have played a small part in her deciding at day 17 to um, discontinue her um, hunger strike. Uh, I have been very, so. I've been very much uh, uh, wanting to have a conversation with Teresa Spence. I've offered multiple times and uh, I expressed concern again uh, today. There was many people in the room that expressed uh, major concern. Why didn't you just invite the Governor General to the meeting? Uh, the uh, those who wish to it uh, are meeting with the uh, governor general now. I understand, and uh, that was the appropriate uh, response. That's not how they see it. They see him as being integral to their treaty, because um, treaties in the past were in coordination with the with the queen, the monarchy, and so on. Do you understand why they see it as such an important? Um, we had a dis we had a discussion about that, and there's uh, there's a variety of opinions on that. When you say that there's going to be uh, enhanced oversight from PMO and PCO, what exactly does that mean? Can you describe what what will be different than the situation right now? Uh, well, I think what we're really talking about is uh, there's times when, uh, as a department, as a minister, we have some negotiations or some uh, something that's uh, significant regionally or locally where we end up in a in an impasse uh, and um, so resolution could potentially come earlier 
with um, with knowledge and um, so there's just uh, rather than having for example like the Crown First Nations gathering rather than having a one-year report the the, the um, uh, Prime Minister would like to have something more immediate so we can like a quarterly report or something like that I mean we, not, these are all subject to further discussions with the between the Prime Minister and and the national chief. Yesterday, Chief Atlio said that relations between the First Nations and the federal government were at a crossroads. Do you feel that it's, that's the case? Do you feel that you've uh, reached a crossroads, a turning point, and that you can probably uh, get a new start? Well, we do agree in the sense that it is clear because of today's meeting that we have specific goals in mind. In other words, a high-level dialogue. We agree with the idea. Speaking now, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, Greg Rickford. Before that, we heard from Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Duncan. I just want to give you a summary. He was there to talk about what came out of this meeting with Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, and First Nations leaders. Let me just give you a summary on this. Uh, what we heard is that they have moved a couple of goalposts forward. Um, they didn't get the full agreement on all of eight uh, of the AFN National Chief Atlio's uh, demands. However, what we did hear from 